Trent, thanks for joining us. Um, how has your season been so far? It's obviously exciting time down at Pyland. So how's it all travelling for you? Yeah, it's um, been a bit of up and down. Um, been in and out of the senior side, but um, last five weeks I've been um, in the seniors and it's been good fun. We've had a lot of close wins and um, exciting games, but yeah, unfortunately... Didn't play yesterday, but um, hopefully there's a few more chances to come. Yeah, still uh, we're at the pointy end of the season now, yeah. coming into finals. So if ever there was a time for you to come yeah. back in, now is nice. yes. yeah, wouldn't it be handy? Uh, where exactly do you see your your spot in, in the side? You were a midfielder going up through mm. Oakley and whatnot. Yeah, um, is that where you want to see yourself self end up in the engine room? Yeah, I think long term, um, I'd like to end up in the midfield um, once I put a bit of size on and whatnot. But um, at the moment, I'm like liking playing on the wing and. Um, I was playing a bit of forward up um, earlier in the year, but um, no, nah, I, th- I feel more comfortable on the wing. It's good fun. Um, you you mentioned the the close matches this year. I assume everyone's asked you about it, but how has it been playing in some of those and and watching some of those? And around the club, there's definitely a belief of you know twenty points down at three quarter time. It's like all right, this is where we this is where we live. This is where mm. we like to be. Um, so. Can you talk us through how you guys developed that sort of confidence in those later stages of games? Yeah, I think there was a game earlier in the year against Geelong. Um, we had a big lead going to the last quarter and they just ran over the top of us. And um, I remember that week we just had a, a mindset of um, going back through the last quarter and the th- do, watching mm. the things we could have done better. Mm. And um, I think from then on we had a few close games after that and it's just the belief's just gone better and better every week. And, um, yeah, we almost feel unbeatable in the last quarter. From That's from... My experience, yeah. Which is incredible because especially a side coming from 17th on the ladder, like different story if you're a Geelong or a team that's yeah. been up there so long, you expect them with that experience to feel comfortable in those moments. Um, but for coming from 17th to be so comfortable in the last quarter when it's sort of do or die is almost phenomenal. How has that belief come about? Um, I think the the coaches this year, Fly, uh, Lepper, Bolts, Scoot, Skip, um, They've just instilled Whole a lot group. of belief. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Besides um, Scoot and Skip, um, yeah, pretty much a whole fresh change in the coaches. So, um, yeah, just right from day one of preseason, um, just brought a lot of energy into the group, and um, yeah, it just really has gives us faith to just go out there and do our thing. Do you have a favourite win out of all of them? I thought it would be pretty hard to top. Uh, well, it probably is probably hard to top the Jamie Elliott one, but yeah. the win against the D's and the win against the Blues were as exciting. Yeah. Um, do you have a favourite one in the close matches? Uh, personally, yeah, I'd probably go the Essendon one. Has um, to be. Yeah. Is that because you single-handedly yeah. won them the game? No, <laughs> that link up no. from end to end was off your own boot. No, no, um, no. Just, talk us through that. Yeah. Talk us through that, those last dying minutes. Yeah, it's a bit blurry, to be honest. Um, I just remember... It, <laughs> Been not long left. Um, we got a kick out. I thought that was going through, but it faded late, hit the post, and then um, I saw Pendles having a little chat to Darcy on the goal line just before the set shot, and I was like, oh, they must be planning something. <laughs> Down oh, the middle I better or get something. Ready, yeah. so, and then Darcy started shooting straight to the boundary, and I was like, oh, it's going to him, definitely. Yeah. So I leaked out early, knowing that it was going to him, and the Essendon player squeezed on him, and yeah, just I got out the back free and didn't think I'd, yeah. Well, it was the most amazing thing because <laughs> yeah. this is a kick out in the, the dying seconds of the game and you would think it would just be locked down yeah. at all costs. Yeah. Like there's no possible way a player could get in this yeah. much space. Yet somehow you have found yourself in acres out on the wing and then the pinpoint uh, delivery into the into the forward flank. Yeah, how many times have you sort of watched that replay uh, on, on the iPhone of a night? Yeah, it was hard <laughs> not to. It just kept popping up um, over the next few days after that. Um, but, yeah, it was a very exciting finish and... Jamie doing what he does best, just, yeah, just a silent killer. Yeah, he what? Did, did it again on the weekend <laughs> yeah, as well, which yeah. I wasn't too happy about. So what what was your thought when you had it? It's MCC stand side. You're in a whole wing to yourself. Was it just hit the first person you see as quickly as you could? Were you, were you wary that there wasn't much on in the middle and you sort of only had one option? Well, firstly, I was going to go inboard to um, Brody Mycheck. Mm. He was about 45 out in the middle of the ground. Um, and then I saw... But that doesn't make a good Insta post. Like. Yeah, no, no, I know. But then I don't know what I did. Last second, I just pulled it across to Jamie. I saw Jamie and then as the ball was in the air, some, and a, a second defender come across and I just thought it was just going to get spoiled across or mm. across the line. But he somehow marked it and, mm. yeah, it was just a crazy finish. I don't know how he did it. 
I'm so curious by the fame that comes with being sort of just a kid in high school and then all of a sudden you're thrust into the AFL lifestyle and especially playing for the Pies, I'm sure you're getting recognised more. After that bit of play where you have single-handedly won the Collingwood Football Club the game uh, <laughs> after the siren, um, did you notice your popularity sort of grow a bit? You're getting recognised a little bit more? or oh. And how, do you, how are you coping with that, that oh. aspect of, of the game? Nah, I'm nowhere near. I think you spoke to my mate Jack the other day. Um, I'm nowhere near his level. But mm-hmm. then again, no one is. He's managed <laughs> yes, to overtake no the whole is. competition no in the space of a few only, months. He's only 19 and it's just crazy what he's doing. But um, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I get a little bit of um, about that kick, but nah, I don't really get noticed too much. Yeah. Well, there'll be a million moments like that over your, your long AFL career, no doubt. Um, how is it sort of uh, playing with that young crop? So you've obviously mentioned Jack Ginevan. Um, the way he's handled and sort of walked through the maze of AFL footy in the last couple of years and the pressures that come with it has been amazing. So how have you found being in this young side with like everyone around you is in the same age gra- yeah. um, bracket? Um, so how's it been with that group and Jack in particular? Yeah, well, I'm really close with Jack, um, as you probably know, and um, it's just awesome. It's just such a fresh environment, such a energetic place to be. And like we've got our, we've definitely got our young players, but um, people seem to forget we've got, Steel, Pendles, um, Howie, mm. all those sort of guys who have had Pendles himself has played a thousand games and it's just, yeah, mm. <laughs> just brings a lot of experience and um, energy to the group. But it, um, yeah, back to the young people, it's just such a good group to be around and um, we've got a pretty close group that are just, yeah, with each other every day and it's just good to be at. When we were at the Pies D's game, we were sitting um, on the wing right in front of the be- or behind the bench, and Mason Cox was running off, um, and he was giving yeah, the crowd plenty, that, yeah, getting yeah. up and about, and we were absolutely pissing ourselves. We <laughs> thought it was the funniest thing of all yeah. time. Quite clearly, it seems like you're, the players at the Pies are really encouraged to just embrace their own personality. Is yeah, that a, a, an initiative that is spoken about, or just something that happens and no one questions? Oh, no, it's not really spoken about. Um, yeah, it's just um, fly. Um, sort of drives that. Um, Want to just be be ourselves, and Jack's a prime example as well. And um, yeah, you can show what your personality actually mm. does to your footy, and it just gives you confidence. So um, yeah, yeah. Well, the pie is so exciting. Who knows what they could do? Um, yeah, remainder of this season. So you're a pies fan growing up. Um, what was it like debuting? So you finally get the call up. Um, how's that feeling like to to debut for the footy club you grew up watching? Yeah, it was pretty special um, playing Geelong on the G um, in front of no people. Yeah, which was it was That's pretty strange. weird, but yeah, I was used to that playing that in the VFL and juniors and stuff in front of no one. So that wasn't really different. It was just mm. a massive stadium that yep. was echoing, and um, no, it was it was pretty special. And then um, flying over to Adelaide the next week with a bit of crowd, and that's got when it win. really hit me. Yeah, yeah, got the first win, which was um, pretty special, and um, yeah, something I'll never forget.